Hi everyone, my name is Joy Wang, a researcher from University of Technology, Sydney. I'm honored here to present my work accepted by ICIP 2022. Uh, the title of my paper is called Positive Unlabeled Learning by Semi-Supervised Learning. Here's the outline of my presentation. First of all, I'm going to talk about the background of my topic, which is the introduction. And then I will give a brief review of the literature. After, after that, I will introduce my method. And lastly, I will talk about my experiment to verify my methods. The first part is the introduction. It basically answers the question, what is positive and unlabeled learning, which is also called PU learning. Standard binary classifications usually includes both labeled positive and negative samples. However, for PU learning, only positive samples and unlabeled samples exist. As you can see the illustration here, on the left hand, hand, uh, on the left hand side, is the standard binary classification. They are both labeled positive and negative samples, and it, so it is very easy to classify. On the right hand side, we can only or we can see that only positive samples are labeled, and the rest of them are unlabeled samples. Uh, actually, PU learning comes from reality. In practice. The training data may only contain positive samples and unlabeled samples. For instance, while we can label sub subscribers who had watched at least 100 games movie as being interested in this general, we cannot be sure about the interest of a subscriber who never watched a Hunger Game movie before. Similar examples can be found in disease diagnosis. For example, in chronic disease diagnosis, while we might consider a diagnosed patient to be positive, the much larger population of undiagnosed individuals are practically mixed with both positive and negative examples, since people might be undergoing the disease's incubation period or might just have not seen the doctor. Roughly, labeling the undiagnosed examples or as negative will hence lead to a biased classifier that inevitably under underestimate the risk of a chronic disease. The second part is the literature review. In this part, we will get to know how do previous studies learn from positive and unlabeled data, and what challenges are they facing. The first line of the method is called two-step method. First of all, it identifies the reliable negative data from the unlabeled data. And then it utilizes both uh, identified negative data and uh, labeled positive samples to train the classifier. But the cons of this method is that the identification of negative samples can be inaccurate sometimes, which will decrease the model performance. The second line of the method is called importance reweighting method. It treats all unlabeled samples as negative ones and reweights these samples to collaborate the data distribution. Some classic methods are called unbiased PU learning and non-negative PU learning. The advantages of this method is that reweighting all negative samples might lead to, might lead to model overfitting, which will be discussed later. Here is a pilot experiment to demonstrate the overfitting problem of the importance reweighting methods. As you can see, this is the NMPU's algorithm's positive uh, probability histogram of all unlabeled set data on CIFAR-10. Given the model 
and each labeled samples, we can calculate its probability of being positive at different epoch. From epoch 10 to epoch 50, the model is getting better and better as distinguish positive and negative samples. However, as the training proceeds, the positive probabilities of most negative samples are increasing, and some of them get, surpri uh, get surprisingly high positive probabilities, being wrongly classified as positive samples. We can conclude that the distinguishable, uh, distinguishing ability of NMPU peaks at a certain epoch in the middle of the training process, but tends to overfit by misclassifying negative data as positive data, which we define as negative sample mis misclassification of important reweighting method. To address this problem, our method is to leverage semi supervised learning to address the performance degrades of importance reweighting method. To this end, we propose a novel SSL based framework to tackle PU learning. First, we use dynamic increasing sampling strategies to progressively select both negative and positive samples from the unlabeled data. And then, we adopt mix-match, which is a semi-supervised learning backbone, to take full advantage of the unchosen samples in the unlabeled set. On top of that, we will leverage co-learning strategies to train two independent networks to avoid confirmation bias. First, we use dynamic increasing sampling to select confident positive and negative samples from the unlabeled samples. We calculate the probability of unlabeled samples being positive at the current epoch, and then we select a certain number of samples with the highest positive probability to the, confi to, to the confident positive sample set, and there are certain numbers with the lowest pos positive probability as confident negative sample set. After we distinguish the confident samples and the unconfident samples, we will merge the confident samples and the uh, uh, positive labeled samples as the labeled set for semi supervised learning, and the rest are labeled as unlabeled set for uh, semi supervised learning. And we use mix match to train our model as the SSL backbone. So uh, for mix match, the images and the labels are linearly combined as a new input and the target. And then we use uh, cross entropy loss on labeled samples and mean square errors on the unlabeled samples. In this way, the whole set of the uh, samples can be well leveraged, can be fully exploited. And then we use co learning to avoid confirmation bias. Uh, because the networks might wrongly select positive or negative samples in this iteration and and keep having high and or low confidence in the next iteration. So first of all, we utilize these two models to co-select confident samples during the sample selection phase. At each epoch, one network Next is the experiment part. First, first of all, this is the characteristics of the dataset. The upper three datasets are computer vision dataset, and the last one is a natural language processing dataset. P class means the definition of the positive labels, and N class means the definition of the negative labels. We compare the proposed method with the state-of-the-art PU learning methods on all datasets. We, uh, we observe that the U UPU will overfit to the unlabeled samples using our network architectures. The second best method is PUBN, BNN, 
uh, which uses only reliable negative samples from the unlabeled samples. Our method selects not only negative samples but also positive samples. Moreover, semi supervised learning techniques are used to leverage these unselected samples. This indicates that the proposed methods can select precise negative and positive samples from unlabeled data and utilize semi supervised learning to leverage the information from these unselected samples. We also study the effects of, of removing uh, different components to provide insights into the effects of these components. To study the effects of co-select, we train a single network to uh, select its own confidence samples. The, de the decrease in accuracy indicates Co-select can select more accurate positive and negative samples by reducing the confirmation bias of a single network. To study the effects of ensemble of predictions of two networks, we use the prediction from a single model. The performance further decreases compared to the original methods, demonstrate the effectiveness of these two components. We also study the percentage of confidence samples we select from the unlabeled set. Tau 1 and Tau 2 control how many samples we select as labeled samples. The larger Tau 1 divided by Tau 2 is, the more samples are included in the label set. As we can see from the table, the best tau 1 divided by tau 2 value for CIFA 10 is 0 0.25. Generally, our method is relatively stable regarding the change of the percentage of samples being selected as labeled samples. Here's the end of my presentation. Thank you for your time.